I will follow, as will likely the uh, LeBlanc that we've seen banned out time and time again. Interesting, however, Tom Kench makes his way up to phase one of the bans. He was in phase two from H2K in the last game. Obviously not wanting Heaver to get himself on a little bit more linear of a champion, perhaps. Uh, the Rengar's banned again, though, and that's to be expected in the first ban phase, especially. Uh, he's been tearing it up. Just oh. all over the place. I mean, quite literally, ripping he, things to everything. shreds. Everything. Solo queue, competitive, yeah. you there, name it. There he's... seems to be a theme here in these champion bands. Like, you've got all these champions uh, who slice things to bits constantly. And a giant toad. <laughs> Sure. I don't know where I'm going with that. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of things like that in this ah, game. So there's uh, the rise band. Yeah, rise band away. Syndra likely to be the first pick. This is basically H2K saying, ban Syndra or we're taking it. If they ban Syndra, might even see it very high presence on the likes of the LeBlanc we've talked about before, or the Cassiopeia would be the other pick. So H2K have left three mid laners available now. Of course, that means that uh, both teams can have access to one of each of them or one of them each, and there's the LeBlanc ban. We expect the Syndra to come up for Febivin. We'll see if that ends up being the case this time. And I mean, basically said to Nehun, what else you got? I would still favor that into Nehun at this point. Like, okay, they could take the Cassiopeia away and just kind of roll the dice that Nehun isn't going to be able to bully that matchup. But if they take the Syndra and put Cassiopeia in front of them, which is potentially an easier matchup to exploit than the Syndra ma uh, than the Rise matchup, and that's exactly what they're doing right now against Origin. They're taking an easier exploitable mid lane. Yeah, so Syndra still finding herself very, very contestable. And at this yeah, point, 7 .1. Wisdom likely to take the Rek'Sai away again. I don't think he'll seal away the Kha'Zix. It's somewhat outside of his wheelhouse, at least when he's been playing here in Europe. So if we do see the Rek'Sai go over, Will Heaver want the Karma now as well, potentially flexing it to mid lane? It's been a while since we've seen Karma very often in the mid lane as well, but a couple of other picks are up there as well. The Ash is another pick that could come through. Yeah, I was going to say the Zyra is also available if uh, Heaver wants to pick himself a support early on, but it does seem that the Ash is something that Origin are valuing, uh, at least the hover on it right now. Would it, not be surprised to see it come in. It makes a lot of sense from them. H2K I may even like to see them go towards the, the likes of a Maokai coming out. Oh, but, uh, ooh, all right. Okay. Switching over to Varus. They take away from Nuclear, but I think Nuclear will be very happy to take the Ash as well. There are other picks available still. The Caitlyn that we've seen. We've seen Jin as well finding his way into that AD we've, carry We've role. seen Ziggs in that role. We have. There is no um, AD associated with it, but still. In competitive, it was bang, so take from what you will on that when SKT Hey man, the guy's, the guy's a world champion. He, uh, exactly, times. he's gonna do whatever he wants to do. So yeah. I think the Ash is a smart pickup here for H2K, put Nuclear on it. They could take the Zyra here as well, but locking their bot lane would put them in a tricky situation because it was an allow the misfortune coming in through pick phase one. They banned it in phase two, remember, when they were looking for that Zyra. We'll see what they're <laughs> gonna give us. <laughs> Febbin just giving everybody, hey, remember when I used to play this? Uh, well, they locked the Zyra. Okay, so I mean that opens up the misfortune. We'll see what happens. If it's not picked up here, it could be banned away by H2K. Exactly. Could very well be picked away uh, or, or banned. Uh, Origin right now have the entire momentum for the next four picks, essentially. If the misfortune comes out here, you force it into a different ban phase now because now it's Origin's turn to ban and they will get the next pick to come out through the draft. So Origin have themselves in a decent setup. That is a heavy poke bot lane, if ever I have seen one. Varus Misfortune. Obviously, potentially, Varus could switch it up to that middle lane as well, but into Syndra, I wouldn't be too much favoring it. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of pokey uh, ADCs really available if they wanted to do it. They could go Caitlyn. If they wanted to put Varus mid, they could then take the Ziggs bottom, and that's a hell of a push. Yeah, it's a hell of a push, but at this point, I've got to look at what Origin are focusing in ban phase two. Eyes back down to the bottom of the screen. You can see mm. Kha'Zix is out of the way for Origin. Lee Sin would be another one that I would like to see. H2K will likely pick up Lee or Elise to round out their jungle matchup here with Kha'Zix off the table. And you can see focus elsewhere for H2K in ban phase two. The Jace once again gets removed from the pool. There is one ban left for each of these teams until we once again resume the pick phase. Cannon ah. banned one more time. 
So I can see the, the feeling of the cannon here. You don't want a lane bully top laner to come through for Odo Amne. The, into the likes of Maokai, it still can do very well. You can do fairly well into tanks with it, and it can snowball fairly heavily and set up fights very well. But I don't know whether it's something that I would be fearing right now in the ban phase. I mean, I guess H2K would have had a favorable jungle for Yankos either way because they're playing into Rek'Sai, but that's a talent ban. Yeah, well, it was offered by Origin, but I, I don't know how serious Nehun was about that. But Talon uh, taken off the board, that's interesting. And that leaves the Rumble available. Instead of Oduwamne hand it, getting it handed to him, Satorius takes it. Satorius has a handful of games on the Rumble, but we know Oduwamne is a Nah player. He can fairly easily play Nah into this matchup if he wants it. We've seen that time and time again. The one pick that H2K can't now rely on is the Maokai. Maokai does fairly badly into Rumble throughout history, but that's in the laning phase. Outside of the laning phase, Maokai is Maokai and will have impact in team fights later on. So one thing about Odo Amne, and, and I believe he's been fairly vocal about this himself, is that he, he's confident in taking bad matchups sometimes because he knows he can generally outplay his opponent. And when you look at experience in the big stage, Odo Amne has it in spades, been playing with his team for four consecutive splits. He had a world championship top four finish, and he's up against, for all intents and purposes, a rookie. Yeah, it is a rookie, and we're going diving. Oh, okay, Yankos. This game Woo, is baby. all about the diving. Maokai Nocturne paired together to try and dive under towers, and we're throwing an Echo into the mix to dive as well. There is a, a lot of difference here from game one pick a man phase. Yeah, we had a lot of phases just like the last time, but there's a lot of dive for sure. I'm liking this. This shows some real spunk from both these teams, and Origin have said that's fine. We made some mistakes. We lost game number one. Come at us. Can he do it again? Can he do it again? Yankos. We've seen Nocturne a couple of times in Challenger qualifiers. Mm -hmm. That was back on 624. We know that a lot of these compositions revolve a lot around diving, getting into the fight very quickly and then cleaning up. You look at the likes of Tabs on Varus. That's a champion that can be fairly susceptible to getting dove. It's all yeah. about those chains of corruptions to follow. Well, pre-6 is going to make life a little bit hard for him, but we'll see what happens once that changes. And H2K, with their composition, are going to be looking for a party in that bottom lane. Uh, definitely keeping an eye out for the Ash Arrow, the Paranoia. Well, you won't be able to follow it up. I mean, that's a great combo in and of itself. You toss a global smoke screen, and all of a sudden, Ash Arrow comes and flings you in the face. Coach <laughs> is going to shake hands once again to walk off stage. And this series could very well end right here, right now, if H2K can come out swinging. Right here, right now, in about 35 minutes, if game one's anything to go by. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I mean, we've seen faster ones. All right, fine. It's Dude, okay. Give me the nuance, give me the minutes, or, or, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's going to be a quick game if they do get rolling. Well, it could, we thought game one would be a quick game, but that's they didn't true. really get rolling. So I, still, there's hope for Origin. Origin fans, maybe we'll uh, see if they can still hang this one on and drag the game out a little longer, get themselves going in the later game. If you want them to win, it's hashtag OG win over on Twitter. And of course, if you want H2K to take this series away, hashtag H2K win over at LOL Esports is once again the place. And man, I mean, Origin have really, really showed that they can hang, but can they win this game to hang on in the series? We'll find out as we're loaded onto the rift for game number two. So, Nuclear and Che, they're new to Europe. They're playing in American bot lane. They're new to the each Cloud other. The Nine bot lane, the uh, yeah. Ash Zyra 2013 season. Um, that one's not Europe, come on. Yeah. You gotta play like Brand Annie. That's what we do. Uh, oh God. It's been a long time. Yeah. But Nuclear and Che certainly have a pedigree when you look at the LCK and uh, their individual performances. They pretty much came straight out of regular split LCK coming over to Europe, so. Yeah, I mean, and this is, uh, well, I'll talk about it in a minute as Wisdom and Yankos aren't sure if they want to completely fight each other out. Uh, Wisdom is Wisdom? caught, though. Febibin has cut him off. Wisdom. This is going to be Ooh. almost first blood. Oh, way to hold that flash to the last second. Oh, he's still got to be careful. Oh, Febibin is around trying to track him down. You can see what Wisdom was trying to do. That's a very difficult flash, unless you're in the exact position. And it took Wisdom a moment or two to get there. Satorius stops Yanko's recall, knew he was on a ward. There's three versus one, but no real crowd control there to keep him in place. Oh, boy. Just as Everybody tense as low. last game. Start off. Wisdom used flash. Febibin used ghost. All right, so slight edge there for H2K. However, flash on the jungler, 
versus the Ghost of the mid laner means that Febivin could Ooh, find himself Hiva. targeted early. Hiva is stepping real far That's forward. That's playing with fire. Uh, gets the Yikes. Thunderlord's proc as well. This is not a good spot, but we do know the Misfortune lane into Zyra does do very well when you can combo the double up. If you can get that increased damage down onto the plant, if you kill it and pop Zyra, she basically loses all of her health. But, uh, it is a favorable matchup typically for the Misfortune. Yep, seen it work over and over, even on the biggest stages of world semifinals and all that. And well, this game may very well be a little bit different with the focus of an objectives because we've got an Infernal Drake spawning on the rift first. It'll be a little while before that happens. We'll see how things change here. Nuclear and Che, we talked about their LCK experience and they really have been putting it to Origins bot lane. Meanwhile, in the mid, both Nahun and Febivin find themselves a little low on health bars. No damage to go all in to start things off. Ooh, oh. Heave, another Thunderlord's proc. Yeah, another that proc. That hurts. Heave's got to be He's lost so much health in this lane that really all of the presence he would have over the next few levels is so much harder for him to get off right now. He needs to be trying to push forward. Problem is, into Ash, into Zyra, every time you try and zone either of them away from the wave, uh, you kind of lose a lot of health very quickly. Speaking of losing a lot of health, well, here's how the laning phase goes between <laughs> Rumble and Maokai. Uh, Rumble sits there in the danger zone for basically 10 minutes of this game and pushes. And if a jungler doesn't come top to help him or his opponent, that's how it stays. Yeah, well, junglers dictate quite a lot of the early game these days. Uh, yep. Top lane is no exception when you look at this Maokai and Rumble matchup. We'll see if Odo Omni is able to claw back a little bit more CS for himself. And I mean, it's been kind of pushing one way in the top and the other way in the bottom. But you can see very clear presence from Wisdom on the top side. You can see two wards down to scout at that top side, but we'll also assist in this middle lane, and Nathan will need as much as he can. You can see their game one stats. Uh, that 206 damage per minute from Nathan was on rise in like a 35-minute game. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, Nathan's going like, to have a rough one. I would want to compare that with like Heaver's damage from the same game because Karma support does he did much do a lot more of damage. damage than that. Uh, um, I mean, he died a lot, but he did do a lot of damage. <laughs> Give him credit. <laughs> Flashing forward for the Mantra Q. Uh, this time around, I mean, he's getting, he's making it rain up in that brush, and and Chase, you know, not going to be able to get away free of the grasping roots though. Do put a lot of damage onto Tabs, oh. the volley from Nuclear. I mean, this is, we talked about a pokey bottom lane from Tabs and Heva. Well, Nuclear and Che have got it too. And you can see it every time Tabs is stepping forward to try and get anything from the wave, trying to get the ranged minions. Oh, Ooh, done. Right. That time it was Tabs trying to kill a melee minion that prompted Nuclear and Che to step forward, trade effectively, and back themselves away. Essentially, basically meaning that Tabs loses CS and loses health, unless he really commits to it, at which point Tabs would end up using Summoner's Wisdom has been spotted out by Yankos. Obviously, the same can be said in reverse. Who's spotting who? Normally, it's Rek'Sai spotting fairly effectively with a passive, but that time it was both. Yeah. Uh, TP used by Nathan. We haven't really talked about Summoner's too much this game. It is a double TP setup out of Origin that may alleviate some of the difficulty they had with setting up objectives and at least picking and choosing fights if they have more than one teleport available. Yeah, and last time I had a pretty clear-cut game plan for Origin was to try to grind out in that landing phase, get themselves to the later stages of the game. It was going well, obviously, for a little while. But now with a winning top lane, how are they going to utilize Satorius here to give them an edge if, of course, uh, they don't get completely got here? Uh, they got Chain be, nuclear spotted. You can see Che is kind of cutting the angle, trying to catch Heaver. Good damage down again. They take a, like a third of his health off. It's all about the angle you run into lane there. You can see Che tries to cut the quickest path, makes sure you can lock Heaver down, forces him around the bottom side of the lane. Ended up getting caught anyway. It's really rough for Heaver. Um, he wants to get damage down, but unless Tabs is with him every single time, not too much that can be done. Even he then. Yeah, even then. And he could have had this Ash, by the way, but they gave it up in favor of the Varus. I mean, maybe the, the game plan was just, okay, well, if we take the Ash, we're gonna want the Zyra if they take it away. I don't know. When they're thinking these things and pick bands, obviously things change on a dime. Well, I mean, it's not a terrible composition, but they have to live with it. And we have to watch for, for jungle impact now on the top side. Sartorius is in a comfortable position. This is where you would normally expect Rumble into Maokai to be perhaps 
uh, as Maokai got a little bit more CS, it kind of evened up, but round about where you'd expect it. The tipping point will be if Odo Amne comes out of this laning phase even, Sartorius is in trouble. If Sartorius can get himself a 30 or 40 CS lead, then Origin have something to really work off in the top side for fights because Odo Amne will be fairly weak in comparison. Yeah, the big problem for Origin is definitely Heva just not being able to get involved. So despite the fact that Taps could have a good pushing lane, it's just not happening. Che does get punished, however, by the piercing arrow. It's not so much of a problem right now for Tabs. He is keeping up in CS as well. Um, it will become difficult for Tabs when he wants to back away because Generally, this bot lane will have pushed out. Nuclear and Che constantly pushing forward, trying to push Tabs to recall so they get good damage down on the tower. It's similar to game number one. Nahian's here. Oh, Parallel convergence yeah. in the push. Oh, Odo Omni's here. Oh boy, throwing down the red oh, carpet. Wisdom. And Wisdom is oh so low, but so is Febby. And Nahun nets himself first blood. And you can see Febbyman was trying to defend the blue invade when Yankos was on the bottom side of the map. They didn't really have the same timing on the top side jungle. And H2K lose out on that one. Good play by Wisdom to go aggressively into the enemy jungle. And for the second time this game, Wisdom gets out with a slither of health. Yeah. Yeah, Wisdom has really made survivability kind of pushing that towards its limit. I mean, let's take a look at how it went down again, because by all means, he should have been dead to rights. So Nation forces Febbervan forward right into a nice equalizer that came through. Pretty much max range on that one coming from Sartorius. He had, you know, an easy trip down from the top side to secure his first assist of the game. And the fact that the kill goes to Nation, very nice here. One zero start for him. He's down a little bit in CS, but he'll, he should be fine, basically. Yeah, Wisdom didn't even get the assist for that. He was you know, busy saying to take the blue buff, but it just kind of made himself bait, but it worked out well, trading for a flash. And he got Febivins too. Yeah, it worked out well. And Febivin now with no flash, you could look at this mid lane. Nathan still has his ultimate available. So considering Syndra is all about the burst damage, all about bursting down her opponent, now as long as Nathan gets his ultimate off, he should be fine in the next engage. And then the flashes will come back up. So Febivin's the one that has to be careful. Origin. Sniffing around for this Infernal Drake. Che trying to clear vision away. He does have a control ward there. And Wisdom is, uh, wow, he's taking more damage than he bargained for. From and those he plants. didn't get it either. He did not get the control ward. Will heal back up oh, as boy. he burrows himself down again. Oh, and it's regenning too. So Che and Yankos take a little bit. But I mean, the, the game is up here. There's no way they can take this dragon. Yankos is here. He was moving over the pit. They still want to. Um, to slightly touch on the Febivan point about uh, hanging on, at least he's up to, towards the Negatron Cloak as well. So mm -hmm. trying to just survive through, it's a fine buy for him. Again, like game one, trying to just survive. You've got a lot of magic damage on the other side. When you look at the top half of the map, you've got the Echo, you've got the uh, the Rumble coming through. And finally, Odo Amne feels like with this, the, uh, the Cowl, he can actually deal anything to Sartorius. Finally, a little bit of that pressure is released. So 10 CS down is an okay spot for Odo Amne to be in. We'll see how the subsequent fights to this game go. Yeah, it seems like the table's turned a little bit in expectations from game one to game two with, you know, H2K being the ones they're looking more to hold out. Obviously, the early game and where the action was dictated a little bit of that. Sartorius not able to put any more damage onto Odo Amne up in this lane. But now Wisdom has a little bit more damage in his pocket as he picks up the Tiamat. Uh, and he rings the dinner bell to go for the Krugs. If Odo Omne starts pushing out a little heavier on this side, that might be a gank up top. May very well be. I mean, Yankos does have his ultimate to respond, but look how far down in the bottom side is. And this is one of the difficulties with Noctin. Uh, rank one, alt really isn't good. <laughs> like, it's so short. But here's the gank you were talking about for Wisdom. Oh, no boy. chance of Yankos replying here. Odon may advanced. force the flash. Burns it already. The Maelstrom is on, but they can't quite close the distance. They're trying to burn down the bark, but Odo gets a big arcane smash. Satorius cannot follow this into tower range, and the gank is foiled. Good escape, and something actually that played out in H2K's favor. Nuclear used the Hawk shot all the way from bot lane. Flash instantly oh, 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 oh. from Tabs. Oh. Did not want to get locked down by All right, that. so he still got reactions. That's good. It was a pretty uh, far away arrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was... well, I just mean, the moment he saw that, oh, yeah, coming okay. anywhere near That's... his direction, he just he instant That's flashed. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, still though. Alt for Flash. Yeah. H2K will be happy with that one. Again, they can now push Tabs back in under tower. 
try and get some damage down on that. Despite that, though, Tabs is even on farm right now with nuclear, so that is an encouraging sign for Origin's bottom lane. And the gold game, you know, it's a thousand in favor of Origin, and that's pretty much all the first blood, a tiny well, bit of farm. This is what Krepo was talking about on the analyst desk, is when you look at priority, Syndra is pushing in Echo, bot lane is pushing in for H2K as well. So it's all about tower damage, the focus, the ability to get in to the enemy jungle from it as well. This is what H2K are working with. They're not expecting to have significant CS gains and see significant leads right now any lead that they would have would be nice it's about that tower health damage but origin have the gold lead for themselves off that first blood yep, and they clear away a ward wisdom picks up a little bit from that Yanko spots him right on the brush but nahum's here so is che strangle thorns hits nobody and that is a key ultimate burn from che right now yeah not the best ult out of che uh so well i guess it was uh, the other way around yeah we saw a few of them go well in the first game. You can see Febovin still has a fair amount of damage, has himself a Fiendish Codex on top of his previous items as well, but it's against the Proto Belt coming out from Nahun. Yep, and Nahun, of course, still has the Corrupting Potion as well, so some sustain. Oh, Che is going to oh, manage to catch, catch on to two. Yankos and in comes in. Paranoia, but they see Wisdom right on the back. Heva flashes into bullet time, and Yankos regretting his decision. Wisdom picks up the kill, and a double TP in. Lay down the red carpet, because in comes Nahun snapping back now. Odo, Che, nuclear, oh, way too low. And that is a lot of summoners, a lot of ultimates, but at the end of the day, it's Yankos who's gone. Yeah, Yankos commits right into the back of the fight, wanting to try and get that unspeakable horror, that fear down onto Misfortune when that ultimate would start onto any target he can. But as soon as the bullet time starts, Yankos is not quite closing the gap, can't quite stop it. And it means H2K have to turn tail and run because out came the double teleport from Origin. We were talking about how influential this summoner would be. Here comes Yankos into the fight. Paranoia makes it very difficult to respond with TPs because of the lack of vision. But you can see Yankos is backing away because Wisdom is in this fight as well. They're anticipating five members of Origin responding to this fight. And H2K have to concede out everything as they back away on bot side. All things considered, it could have gone far worse for H2K. As it stands, they lose their jungler and they lose a pretty big dragon, but yeah, it could have been a whole hell of a lot worse. And that's why that double TP compared to the single is so big for Origin. But the theory from H2K is quick fights that are ended before Origin can ever react. You use the paranoia, your TP is already channeling before you've even begun, and out comes the Ash Arrow to start the fight. By the time the double teleport theoretically completes from Origin, the fight's already over. But that's not what happened in that little engage. Origin were able to weather the early part of the fight and turn it right back around on H2K, and these fights have to be cleaner if H2K want to be able to take the early game wins. Well, and they're so far behind in that early game. 2k gold doesn't seem like that much, but at 14 minutes is definitely impressive for Origin on top of the dragon. They've got another one coming up will be Mountain Drake. So these are really, really important dragons to be able to secure objectives, to be able to get those fights. And if you just look at the vision all across the river, it's all Origin. Because they were able to win this fight, they were able to lay down their line of vision. Wisdom in the enemy jungle, picking up camps and denying them more from Yankos. This is looking great right now. And now it kind of puts the fear a little into Nuclear and Che. They used a lot on the bottom side. Now no flashes available on Che. So if ever he pushes forward and suddenly gets caught out, Ooh. but it's mid lane, they go get another flash down. This yeah. time it's Febovin's. Just from Wisdom showing face, Febovin instantly flashing away. So for the moment, he has no summoners. His ghost is yet to come off of that cooldown. Nicely played, Wisdom knowing where he needed to be. And it's going to be hard for HGK to move into this river without being spotted. A lot of wreck side tunnels, a lot of wards all over the place, and they can ping it inside of Origin. They'll see Yankos up on top side, and he's got no farms to go to. Che setting up a plant just in case it was Heaver that was in the bush so that he can at least try and trade some of the damage down before he goes to ward, doesn't want to get caught out. Now it's Yankos looking on the top side. Has Paranoia available. It is still only rank one. Rank two, it starts becoming a little bit more significant. You end up being able to come out from outside of warded areas. Uh, rank one tends to be you end up standing around wards as you try and get into a lane. Um, so we'll see how Yanko's second ultimate of the game goes. The first one kind of backfired. Yeah, Yankos has definitely taken this series uh, to play these hyper-aggressive, big damage junglers. First, the Kha'Zix, which he had a lot of success on, but now this Nocturne, which has, you know, so far not panned out, but it is only 16 minutes into this game. He's talked about roughly 35 minutes. Well, you know, maybe longer, maybe less, but at this rate, I think you're probably right on the money. 
We're on the way towards a game that uh, is a little dissimilar from the first one. Yeah. Origin kind of were even for a while. This one, they have a good lead. Um, and I think it'll kind of slow some of the criticism that they've got. I don't think this is the kind of lead that is going to kind of shut everybody up. <laughs> like no. A win in this series, however, would go a long way to do that. But at this point, 2,000 goal is a fair lead. We've seen it happen before. Teams be this far ahead and then end up losing it all on one little exchange. You could even say that the first game kind of went that way. Origin picking that fight up on the top side, losing out on the Baron and H2K kind of just blowing a lead wide open. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I mean, Tempered Expectations are really the name of the game for this Origin squad, but uh, it's definitely one that the fans should be pretty excited that this team is not really getting completely dominated by, frankly, one of Europe's best squads. And they've had a lot of roster changes themselves. But all the same, good action early on. It's a great opening game, or great opening series, I should say, for the European LCS. So Nahum shoving a wave in here as Yankos comes into intercept, and it's just about the slow push, making sure that they can keep the edge that they have by themselves some more time. I mean, mid game does look really good for this Origin squad. Whenever you have a rumble, it seems like that's always the game plan. Yeah, it's, you know, get to that point in the game where you can start taking fights and theoretically everything's okay because you can take good fights early on, right? But the problem is Odo Amne is sitting on nearly 2,000 gold right now. It means he's going to have an item complete and he's coming out of the laning phase not too far behind. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, 20 CS down, still a rough place to be. But if he dies here, that would really uh, mess things up for him. Yeah, he's going to throw the sap and wisdom here. waiting. Yankos is here as well. Rank one ult still. Yankos is moving a little far out of here. He's out of his ult range for okay. now. Wisdom has still not made a move. Oh, man. This is master acting if Odo... He's not going for it, though, Odo, because Odo just, really to push. Odo has no reason to push, which is the reason. Now he starts to trade. In comes oh, Yankos. counter gank. Who is ganking who? Satorius, though, is going to oh, be the, the one fear. to fall instantly, thanks to the fear. And the TP's canceled out of Nehun. Wisdom finds himself alone. And H2K are going to be able to clean up, too, here. Odo Wamne with a kill himself. That fear was perfect timing. Wait, watch Nuclear coming through the jungle. Ash Arrow is released. Oh, Nehun has to burn just about everything. And he still gets stunned behind his tower. Febivin couldn't finish him off with the burst damage. All the same action across the map as Heva and Tabs finding nuclear, but they miss on the ultimate. The second one tags him, but the bullet time is not enough damage. You can see Che coming a little bit late there, but they managed to get it. Meanwhile, though, Tower First Blood is going to go H2K's way up in the top. Yeah, H2K with this Nocturne had enough damage down in the top lane to be able to push through Nocturne and Maokai together after getting that kill. It's the critical timing of the fear that locked onto Satorius in the top lane that meant H2K could secure that kill. There was no equalizer used from Satorius because he couldn't activate it before he died. And that meant that Odo Amne and Yankos, despite already looking like it was a little bit rough, if Wisdom had come out, you know, Satorius at this point feared. You can see the icon indicating it. TP was attempted by Nahian, but Wisdom pretty much left on his own on the top side. Really nice fear timing from Yankos. Then we went to mid lane for a little bit of a dive, but nothing really came from it. Yeah. On the other hand, Origin will manage to get themselves Mountain Drake. This is really, really useful the longer the game goes for them. Febivin might be in trouble himself, but he's able to walk out of the parallel convergence. And Yehun is unable to get the damage oh, out. Shea. Shea is caught, though, in Wisdom. Just like that, they finish him off. So even though it's a 3v3 bot side, Yankos took a little while to get there. It just seems like whoever's there first is going to get the spoils. Yeah, it looks like Che was trying to place a ward to either defend against the Mountain Drake or at least just trying to hold some of the jungle presence on the bot side. Origin will maintain a lead, and you've got to also factor in an Infernal Drake and a Mountain Drake as well for Origin. So it's not only the gold lead that they have right now, it's the Dragon lead as well. Here comes Yankos. Yeah, but he was there. Oh, oh the damage on Tabs. Do they have enough? The fear is there. Bullet time, Yankos finishes him off, but now he's by himself as he tries to hunt down Heva. Wisdom gets revenge. 80 carry for jungle trade. Oh, uh, Yankos was desperately hoping for the, the blades, his passive, to kick in and give himself a little bit of regeneration off that hit onto Heva. But it was enough that they got the kill on Tabs. Parallel Convergence in mid lane. They're trying to push it out. Oh, Wisdom's Wisdom. here too. He's on the other side. So is Heva, but so look low. at how low he is. He can't get involved. Uh, Wisdom now unleashed the power and an auto attack from Oda Wamne. 
finishes that job. It's four to four in kills. There are a lot of these mistakes happening. I don't think Wisdom really realized how low in health Heva was as they were coming towards it. Heva has no ultimate either. He couldn't really offer too much. Satorius roamed down, didn't use his ultimate either. So H2K are going to capitalize on Origin, kind of over committing again when they shouldn't have. And they're just going to take this tower down. They're ignoring it. Here comes Satorius, has his ultimate available. All right, so they back off the tower for a moment, but Origin were rapidly losing ground there. And not only that, they've lost the gold lead as well. H2K find themselves a couple hundred above their opponents. Another dragon spawning will be the Infernal. It's going to be a long time before that happens, but the dragons are going to play a big part in this game. With the tower damage and the ADAP that we're getting from both the Mountain and the Infernal. One stun on Heva. Nahoon trying to prevent the mains from going too far. He does phase dive in, but there's a lot of H2K members right there, and Wisdom's going to have to back out in the... Thorns go with him. Yeah, Nahin can't afford to do that one again. Uh, the ultimate is now available for Febovan and isn't for Echo, so that would spell the end of him. Has TP available, but mid tower is already getting pushed in. Origin are looking to collapse here. Look at their positioning now from Satorius on the top side, Heva on the bottom. However, Heva is squishy on his own and has to be very, very careful if he pushes too forward. Satorius had already backed himself away because there's a big wave on the top lane that uh, Satorius has to go and deal with. Yep, HDK felt that they could very safely back off without the worry of a collapse, just pushing Heva away and Odo on the top side leading those big minions that way. And he has gotten out of this laning phase just fine. A little bit of help from Yankos, and he was able to do it. And honestly, 10 CS, really not all that bad. Now, pushing in the mid lane, though, our tabs in Heva. Nuclear's there to defend. There's not nearly enough damage on this tower. Origin are sniffing for anything they can get here, but H2K seem to be controlling the pace of this game. Yeah, nothing much is going to come from that mid lane right now in the favor of Origin. It's the mid tower they're trying to hold, though, at the same time. As both teams shoved out the wave and cleared out, Nathan a little bit afraid of Che. Figured he may have Febovan with him because of uh, how long Febovan's been out of lane and the fact that Nuclear is the one in the mid lane clearing through. So mid lane is an out bot. Of course, teleport is the advantage for Nahian. Oh boy. Origin trying to show some muscle in this mid lane, but they're unable to really do anything but just keep H2K from marching down the line. They're going to have to bring Wisdom here if they really want to start pushing down this mid, but they might need Nahun as well. It just seems like H2K are a step above right now, a step ahead, and the double TP is gonna help them stay that way. Or excuse me, on Origin's side, it might help them turn it around. Tabs wants to make sure that uh, Origin can try and turn it around. He's bought himself a QSS fairly early <laughs> on. And Executioner's calling coming out from Heva as well, trying to just cut through any healing. Of course... Uh... They need to do damage before healing's necessary, though. <laughs> Yeah, it offers him a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he's okay. He's, he's on misfortune. He's doing a little bit. Get that 15 AD. And he hasn't died this game, to be fair. He's been very low, and but but he was definitely, uh, I would say, stepped up from his previous game even. Yeah, I mean, first game was a bit rough. Stepping forward to try and ward in bot lane and getting 3 v one I mean, as, as Krepo said on the desk, it's not a mistake that you should really be making in the LCS, but... Happened a couple of times to Heva. Arrow comes out, there's a QSS. Ooh, and Yankos goes in onto Heva, tries to turn his attention, flashes and flashes and flashes, and the red carpet's down. Tabs picks up Yankos, and H2K are turned away as the teleport comes in now. Or <laughs> gone. Goodbye. He, he's okay. out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he did want none of that. That was a Houdini if I ever saw one, but we might be back into another fight tower here. Is done. Oh, Omne, the tower is done. They find Wisdom Ooh. and melt through his health bar. But Nahun comes back out of nowhere. Instant exhaust. Chase melted through. Satorius absorbs the ultimate of Febovin and its fights around the back. Nahun stepping it up with the damage, but he's done. The burst. There's no help. Febovin finishes him off. It's a three for three, and we're not done yet. He was going down. Double kill for the tree. And Nahun, he used his ultimate to get back down to the bottom side and avoid the fight from H2K at first, and it left left him in a very difficult situation, came back into the fight with no ultimate for himself, would have been able to duel out Febovan perhaps, but at that point, no ultimate available, Febovan takes that fight, and down goes Nahion, and down go two towers in favor of H2K. And Oda Wamne is getting big, he's sitting on 2200 gold right now, but four, zero, and three, this is the Maokai unkillable part that we're talking about, and he just finishes off kills. They may not have the burst to do it 100%, but one arcane smash does the job,
up. And now H2K are going to equalize on Infernal Dragons. I like this play out of Origin, though. They're going to try and go for the Baron instead. Yankos secures the Infernal Drake. It's oh, a it's little spotted. too late, though, by Origin. Yeah, you said it's spotted from the Hawk shot. There's 3,000 gold on Febivan, 2,000 gold at least on Odo Amne. So a lot was just thrown at that Baron to try and make sure that there was no attempt out of Origin. Origin do not have the read that H2K had backed themselves away. So it ends up being a, a good attempt out of Origin, but... Ash Arrow, it's gonna uh, land on Wisdom. They wanna fight this still. Looks like it. Febivan still a little bit of ways away, but Odoame is tanking up everything. Down goes the Equalizer, but now Odo has flashed away. Origin on the chase. They're smelling blood here. If they can finish off the tree, it's a big shutdown for them, and the gold goes in Nahum's favor. Big bullet time, just not enough damage because it's only support and misfortune. But Yankos and Che are pushed back for now. H2K a little overcommitting with Odo Amne on that top side fight. They were making sure the Baron was not attempted and never got finished off. But Odo Amne had nearly two and a half thousand gold in his inventory before that fight. So really needed to go back and shop. That's, I mean, you think of it already. He had that much gold on him and it took him that long to die with his ult running. It's going to be a tough one to kill for OG as this game goes further and further. But Wisdom going to try and do whatever he can in the objective game. Pick up Origin's first tower of the game on the bottom side. Yeah, but Torres is caught. Oh, no. He's going nowhere. Febivin gets himself another kill. They managed to turret in the bottom side, but now Satorius is gone for a good 40 seconds. Tabs and Heva gonna make tracks over to this Baron right now, but the vision is gonna be going H2K's way as they get freedom to clear it on out. Yankos was looking for a dive here. Heva and Tabs both very squishy. No oh! back up, the arrow lands, and Yankos is right on top of him. They catch him with the arrow from all the way away. Nuclear gets it from the mid lane, and Nuclear, he's just gonna attack down Wisdom. Wisdom's on his own. Oh boy, nowhere to go but into a health. tunnel, man. Okay, Nuclear is getting real big right now. Nehun's forced to back off this top tier too. And Che has come to party up in the top side. This is going to be another one for H2K. They say, you take one turret down bot, we're gonna take a couple ourselves. Five to one now, and this gold lead has gone up. 4,000 gold in favor of H2K. Yeah, this game has exploded because Origin have stopped doing their due diligence. Sartorius pushes out on the top side. A great arrow from Nuclear catches uh, Heva as he's running through the jungle. That one, less Origin's fault. But honestly, it's been a little unclear out of Origin what the game plan is. Ever since trying to rush the Baron down, trying to just go for it and keep H2K down, Origin have looked a little bit loose. They need to come back together, start communicating a little bit more and tighten up these plays because they're getting caught off one by one and H2K are getting further ahead. Well, this is one of the troubles with you know, throwing together a roster that may or may not have the most experience altogether. He was melted instantaneously, and Febivin is on a rampage. Unleashes the power onto Tabs. Yankos tags in, and they just make it look so damn easy. And guess what? It's Baron time. Origin couldn't react fast enough with Nathan and Satorius. Neither TP was available. There's an equalizer up to try and deter the Baron and maybe go for a Hail Mary steal. Satorius has put himself into the danger zone, but look at H2. Okay, they're holding out. They're gonna wait oh, for Equalizer boy. to go. It doesn't matter. It's taken too long. Nagin is the only one now with a Lich Bane prog. Would be a one hell of a steal if he gets it. Satorius is trying to make himself look tasty, but Ooh. look at that burst damage. And over the wall goes Odawane. He's stopping Nahun. He goes in. He, he gets the steal. He stepped back. Nahun with the hero play. Nahun for all of the haters steps in with the prog. Gets the Baron steal. Yankos will have to look at again at how that smite just didn't quite connect for him. An origin really, really making H2K pay for being quite so patient on this. It was a good fight out of H2K to start it. The arrow missed, but kept Heaver right in place to be taken out. The damage lands onto Tabs. Wisdom can't survive, and H2K, they are trying to very patiently wait out Origin here, but Nathan holds for so, so long. Parallel Convergence goes in. Oduwamne goes out. Nathan was not interrupted gets the auto attack off the jump, uses his ult to get back and is able to get himself away. Origin, that may very well hold this game and maybe, maybe be enough to build a reply to take us to a game three. If there was ever a miracle steal that they needed, it was right then and there and Nehun really stepped up. Excellent play out of a guy who, remember, 
has not even won a game on a big stage. He's played only in the LSPL, that's China's Challenger League, and not been able to find a win here at opening day just yet. But what an incredible play out of that rookie. Origin, they have to have a little more confidence now. Let's see what they can get done with this Baron buff. So far, occupying the mid lane, but there's a TP flank from Moto Wande. They see it, and in comes the paranoia. It's on to Heva. Instant flash, followed by Yankos. He's making it rain. Satorius, they've Feminine turned their dead. attention. A big shutdown on a Feminine. Feminine. Yankos is gone. Yankos All of a is sudden, dead. Heva doesn't Nathan's even go down. Tabs is going to be melted, unfortunately, for Origin. But now, Odo is going to be turning this one around. Nuclear with a big pickup. That's two for two, or three for two, I should say. I mean, Origin, they managed to just kill Feminine at the beginning of that fight. Nathan Negan found his way onto him. Somehow, Feberman's ult on cooldown. Flash was used previously, so it just looked like Feberman couldn't quite last through it. Nakin wants to really make a name for himself here oh as the Origin mid laner. He's gonna get Odo on me. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to shred through that bark, but they do it. Nehun having an infinitely better game. 5-1-2 and two now on this Echo. And, and there's another Infernal coming up. second Infernal plus a Mountain for Origin. Let's take another look. This is how Feberman got caught out. It was a teleport into the back of the fight. I think Feverman maybe thought it was Satorius at first. Wisdom was the one that did so much work against Feverman's health bar at the onset of that fight. Nakin put himself all the way back in base with his ultimate, which left Tabs out on his own for the second half of this fight. And Nakin had to run it back. So this actually went better for H2K in the second half than it really should have after losing a lot of their damage early on. Yeah, not only that, Yankos went in really heedless to just try and dive onto Heva. He sensed a quick kill. And Satorius was right there to pretty much back him up. I mean, you know, usually it's the AD carry you want to peel for. Well, Origin have two. Yeah, they have two. One of them doesn't quite have as much damage. Black Cleaver's doing a fair amount of work in the team fights. Yankos. Oh, uh, he's oh boy. And that's the fear. Instant QSS doesn't even matter. Now, the question is can Yankos get out of this one scot free? Because Wisdom is hot on his tail. So is Nehun, but I think he's going to be out of there just fine. The QSS was a nice thought, but when you've got the Duskbringer trail still following you... I think you and, need uh, a Guardian Angel first. Yeah. All right, Yankos is uh, getting a little grief farm here, but Nehun's on him, but he knows he's in tower range. He knows he's fine, but the damage was pretty real there. Wisdom Febby. trying to go in on the backside, and Febivin sends his ult out. It hits Wisdom, who's still tanking enough to absorb most of it right now. A couple of ultimates down here, but... Origin are eyeballing this top, and remember, they have a big bonus from those two Infernal Drakes. They should have one. Still advantage for Origin as they polish off that turret, a little enhanced damage for the Mountain Drake as well. And they've dragged it to within 300 before. Yeah, it was 300 for a while, and then someone just, I think, Odo oh, Hamley just got a big stack of minions that uh, put it further in H2K's favor. Uh, at this point, Origin, that Baron Steel has done so much for them, and they can he had a lot of haters before this, a lot of threats, talking about never won a game, looked kind of rough in LSPL, people went back, watched his games, I mean, that'll do it. Baron Steel. It's one hell of a highlight, man. As the pivotal point in a game, Origin haven't yet built themselves enough of a uh, resurgence in this game, but it certainly is the start of getting there. You still have to watch out for, for Yankos. Early on in this game, it didn't look like this Nocturne was going to be able to do quite as much, but here we are sitting at 5-4-3. and three. He's had a few misfires, but look, Black Cleaver, Edge of Night, he's getting tankier. Looks like he's building towards a Guardian Angel, so uh, that is going to be a quite literal nightmare for Origin, whoever gets dove on. Tabs is going to have to be real quick on the Chains of Corruption. And yeah. there's a Spell Shield. Yeah, the Spell Shield's a little trickier to land. Uh, Edge of Night is okay, because you can kind of go in with it on while you're in there. It's kind of that mini Banshee style thing where you go in and you go, hey, first thing's not really going to hit me. Um, so it's not too bad. But Yankos should be able to survive through some of that. There is still an exhaust and heals and QSS and all of that. And but. Guardian Angels. Uh, yeah. As we see him completed. I mean, him and Otawamne are going to be pretty ridiculous front lines at the moment. It does seem, however, Febivin, uh, he's only been caught a couple of times, but that was such a big part of that last engage. And you can see how the gold is swung in this game. Uh, H2K have definitely controlled quite a lot of it towards this 20-plus you know, minute mark, but, you know, Origin have come close to equalizing. Well, there was this big portion where H2K were ahead throughout the early game, and then they chose one fight, and it really ended up backfiring. And H2K, that's where their lead came from. And they lose it again off the Baron Seal. Origin, their Baron buff has expired. So there's no 
real, uh, you know, control of the map like that to lean back on. Now they kind of are at, at the mercy of where H2K had got themselves to before with their lead. And you can see Origin are they're definitely building a survive right now. Wisdom dodging out of the gank squad from Che Yankos and Nuclear there. As you can see, Heva making it rain. Just check the brush, but HK moving into forward positions, trying to push this in, trying to make sure that Origin cannot go too far out of their base. And there is another Baron, and very likely we'll see another Baron attempt from H2K. Edge of Night was used by Yankos. That's the item that's on cooldown in his inventory. It is a fairly low cooldown as well, though, so uh, it's only 45 seconds. That is a clutch control ward. Yankos Not spotted by H2K. Didn't check it. All right, they're going to be able to get Skull of Crab Vision, but you can see all five members of Origin pretty close to that mid lane. The only one not there is Nehun, the hero of the last Baron attempt. May not come to that. Him trying to steal another one away. We talked about a 35-minute game. Well, we've already gone over that. I mean, this is very, very close, very tense right now. Some of the team fighting mid-game power has gone out of Origin, but they definitely have a spark if they can turn that into a fire. If they can. It's a little bit of a mismatch comp. You've got a, a fair amount of team fighting coming through. Wisdom gets checked in the Raptor area, but you can see they got some poke, they've got some dive, they got some, you know, fighting potential. Satorius, we haven't seen too much from him recently. His time has kind of fallen down a bit more. He had that laning advantage against Odo Amne earlier on, but deep into this game, the important equalizers haven't really quite hit the mark as much as we would like them to normally. Yeah, all the same. I think Satorius has definitely played, you know, more than adequately against a very tough opponent like Odo Omne. Uh, and, you know, kind of shown, hey, you know, I do deserve to be on this LCS level. I am up there. He has not had, up until today, LCS level experience. He's been playing for quite some time in the Challenger scene. He's definitely not too young. I mean, this is a guy who's 22 years old stepping into his first LCS match. Still, we need to see a little bit more, and we'll see if that comes out. Will he be able to make a clutch play the way Nehun was able to? Uh, I still can't wrap my head around that, man. No matter what happens in this game, that has got to be the highlight. Someone will slow it down, I'm sure, and look at what was added together. Pro throw, Bell, throw, throw, they're going to throw some, like, dust stuff over it and, like, do a 360 Auto degree. Attack, I love those. Passive prog. Like, someone will, someone will, like, do the math and do everything and see just how far away Yankos was away from that. Um, oh, yeah. I think it's pretty straightforward. He jumped in, got that empowered auto, <laughs> and gets it. But Nahian has a lot of damage compared to uh, Yankos when it comes to the Baron Steel. But when you look at it with their counterparts, Wisdom to Yankos. Oh, here goes the Ash Arrow. Ooh, okay, nicely moved by Straight Eva and Tabs. Right the, into the edge. The champion picks for H2K kind of show a lot about how the damage is going to go. Here comes Odo Amne into the back line. Yeah, Paranoia. they want to start this fight, but Wisdom, he's locked up Febivit and Yankos Hiva now. He's going to get jumped on by two. Nuclear picking up Wisdom, and they might be burning Yankos away, but it's not enough damage just yet to even pop the GA. A big shutdown for Nuclear, and Origin find themselves without three members just like that. And another fight that we have to see from the perspective of Nahian as well, because he just died with Flash and Zonya's available. And ult, um, and for that ult matter. for the other. Yeah, I was thinking I had three that I was looking at that he still had and didn't think to check the ult again. But H2K seemingly caught him out in that fight, and they're going to get Baron here. Febberman takes up the first hit a little bit more than he would have wanted to, but Yanko's just standing on top of it. He's got the Guardian Angel, but yeah. they secure that one really easy. No need. Well, he smites it anyways, but there was no contestability. Let's take a look at that fight one more time. Wisdom looked like he was the one who wanted to go in. So Nahian recalled alt uh, TPs into the fight from the backside. Wisdom dies. What catches Nahian? Everybody. Oh, exhaust goes down, and he just ends up surrounded. Odo Amne dies onto him. The exhaust stops him from really killing nuclear or forbidden in that fight. And Turns it all the way around. Didn't have the opportunity to ult or Zonyas or Flash. Yeah, this is looking like the beginning of the end for Origin. They had the chance to make it happen, but they've Tabs lost out on Baron. Tabs is up topside. There's an Elder Drake. They concede the, the presence on the Elder Drake from Tabs going top, trying to just push things back, knowing that Odo Amne wants to sit up there in the top side and push it out because Satorius can't deal enough with him right now, I would imagine. Not alone, at least. So for everybody who uh, still likes making those ADC in 2017 memes, take a look at that damage that Nuclear put out in that fight. 
That's the power of an ADC when you have proper protection in there. And uh, it's definitely showing up pretty big on this Elder Dragon right now. It's going down, no problem. At 40 minutes into this game, they've got Elder, they've got Baron, H2K have got everything they need to try and close this one out, short of a miracle of a fight by Origin. Hurricane, Essence, Reva, Infinity Edge will do it in a close, enclosed fight. So Nuclear able to get good damage down onto Wisdom, despite Wisdom having some tanky stats to him, and everybody from there was a bit squishy, so he's able to just shred people down and output a fair amount of damage in that fight. But uh, Yankos didn't have his GA popped. He was I don't so think that's, close. I don't think that's the kind of thing that is going to put the game either way, but uh, certainly Yankos... Looked like he'd accepted his fate when he just stood still in that fight. Wisdom just accepts the Ash Arrow there. He's caught again. He does manage to tunnel his way to freedom. But he took a lot of damage in return. No summoners burn, but they don't have a whole lot left of them. Yanko's marching the minions up towards the mid, and it looks like HDK are just trying to squeeze this one out. Wisdom is going to be able to clear some minions away with the help of Heva, but they are losing so much ground here. And Sooner or later, they're going to have to concede a turret. Nahun trying to stop the push on bottom side. Just like we normally expect Rek'Sai to be able to go lane to lane, Nocturne can do the same. Yankos is able to sit mid lane, empower the minions, push forward, and go top to oh, try and kill Satorius. Go Golden, but unfortunately going for the gold ain't enough, enough this time around. Satorius is down. Yankos and Odo getting out of harm's way for now, but if they can punish, there is a tower they managed to save. Odo, Nehun should be able to finish the job as he flashes to pop the GA, and now they turn for Nocturne, but look at what H2K are doing. Finding nobody at home, they push in the mid for the win, and they have maybe sacrificed Odoanne to do it, but they are gonna get themselves at least one Nexus turret. Origin are scrambling to try and save their base. Rexai had to ult back here. Febivan is a little pushed forward. H2K maybe have to reconsider. Arrow dodged. Febivan takes out tabs, however, Wisdom on the backside looking for nuclear Yankos revitalized, looking for Heva. Nehun going in. Wisdom trying to block him out here, but he's pushed away and feared. And now he's going to just barely get out of harm's way. The volley and Shay with the plants finishes it off. Can't see much else stopping H2K from taking this one. It's going to be the last Nexus turret. It's going to be the Nexus and a 2-0 sweep for H2K. Not just yet. Nehun in a blaze of glory, but there goes the Nexus. H2K win. Origin scratched and they clawed to try and hang on at the end. They could not hold H2K back. And H2K take the first series 2-0. But honestly, H2K looking solid the later the game goes. Origin looking a lot more solid than people expected just in general. Oh yeah. It did not look like it was going to be 2-0 from the way Origin were playing that game out. A couple of mistakes, a couple of catches. But this is what a team like H2K can do. This is a top four worlds contender, and they're showing why. Well played to them, and a, and a very well earned two and zero victory for H2K on this one. But I think Origin can have some smiles even after a big loss. Remember, this is theoretically the toughest opponent in that group. Yeah, I mean this... they're going to face off against Unicorns of Love. They're going to face off against Vitality. Splice is going to be a tough one too. But I mean, like. There are some winnable opponents for Origin in this group, for sure. This was the, the theoretical captain of the draft, the top team that they could have faced, and the fact that they are dragging them past 40 minutes says a lot about maybe we're underestimating Origin slightly. I think there are certainly games that they can pick up here, and I'm excited now to see the rest of the, the, the you know, opening week's games. Yeah, I mean, you can see Leduck having a laugh on there, too. I mean, like, it, it's not, it's not, like, totally killing your mental to lose on day number one when you're able to put up a good performance overall. I mean, this is the kind of, uh, in, you know, situation where Origin can be a little happy about it, but H2K, they're the team we should focus on. They win the first series. It's been a while since we've heard that one. Yeah. When H2K you, have earned it for sure. With a new split. Oh, yeah, because himself a mic. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, Yankos has been given a mic. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, to be honest. Yeah. As long as it's not a hot mic right now, just <laughs> on his own, he's able to just... I mean, he's, he, puts out, he puts out quite a lot on Twitter. It made him pretty famous last year. Um, I don't know, but people... I mean, his performance does back it up. I know, people probably want to hear from him more than they want to hear from us. Yeah, probably, but for more on that clean sweep, we're going to actually head over to the analyst desk to talk about...